Welcome back to Stuck in the Nail. I'm Daft Hobbit, and with me is Echo 5 Romeo. Dude, what's up? The Hurricanes played today, right? They kicked some ass or what? Doug, Carolina Hurricanes. They didn't kick some ass, but they won. They and won. they beat probably one of like two of the best um, hockey players in the league currently. Uh, um, I can't even think of his name right now. It's fucking escaping. Anyways, they played the Edmund Oilers and Oilers and uh, man, what a game! It was a hard fight and they they won and like uh, we got two points. So fuck let's go, yeah, baby. playoffs. That's good, man. I mean, I'm 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 a hockey fan. I like lacrosse more, but I'm like I got to get back into hockey. Okay, I need, I just I'm oh, behind yeah. on all my sports really because I just play Star Citizen too much. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm just too much right into on. video games. Um. But yeah, welcome back. The only podcast in the entire world talking about ground combat in the realm of Star Citizen. Uh, we're pretty unique, and we like to tell you that we're unique. We will never stop Sorry, doing that. Sorry, we're snowflakes. Yeah. I'm happy about it. Yeah, we like our niche. So um, we got some good stuff for you today. This is episode 12, by the way. Holy shit. So, the uh, one, two, man. The one, two. We're, we're in double digits, and we're going to keep going. So. Star Citizen, let's dive into it. We had an eventful weekend uh, with the privateers this week, I'd say. Uh, yeah. Good oh, time. so we've been talking about planning, right? And yeah. all of that sort of got to pay off last night, which was cool. It was awesome. It was good for us. It was good for, for, for the, the members. Yeah, it was good all around. Um, so we squared off. We, we commenced Operation Dalton Fury yesterday afternoon, um, hosted by the Pathfinders, the UEE Pathfinders. So... Thank you, guys. If you're tuning in, Pathfinders are welcome. Um, my God, those dudes are professional dudes. Like Not only professional, but they are fucking savage, man. Savages. Like, they are a tough group to fight. Like, genuinely a tough group to fight. I, mm -hmm. My hat's off to them. Dude, in the air, like, uh, I wasn't in the air. Neither were you. So, we've only, we're going off of limited information from our air guys. But they, they had... A, a solid fight last night with them and good yeah. trades back and forth. Um, and just the adaptability pathfinders. If you're listening, the constant like bewilderment that we experience when we, when we roll with you guys or uh, attack you guys or whatever, when there's an exchange <laughs> is like, you're just extremely adaptable so quick. And in this game, that's King organization and coordination is King. Like we say, we've said this multiple times on the podcast, right, Echo? It's like, if you're a good shooter, if you're good at clicking pixels, good for you. It doesn't mean shit if you're in the persistent yeah. universe. If 12 motherfuckers jump out of a Valkyrie and surround you, they will, they will locate and close with and destroy you, right? Yeah. The, these, the Pathfinders are savages that's the best way to do it they're like they're just these professional savages so yeah man. um dude we had a great fight with them in the cave and uh well and you know what else i appreciate about the ue pathfinders is it, they have this mill this milsim uh rapper i suppose but they don't act like that right like they don't yeah. act like your typical milsim communities so uh just they professional do it correctly. um yeah, they oh, like. Man. I mean, honestly, are they are putting a good name on the Milsim community? And I, again, that just great people to play with. Yeah, and they they got some excellent quality stuff. We're gonna be linking their YouTube below, um, mm -hmm. and their community because we want to keep working with them. And uh, yes, it's it's awesome. Like, I honestly think we can learn much more than they can learn from us. Like, I think they're a little bit more ironed out than we are. Um, oh yeah, and so I'm excited to do more operations with them, team up with them, go against them more. Because it's when you mm -hmm. find somebody in a game like Star Citizen who has that mentality that you have, and uh, like one one person having that mentality is one thing, but an entire org of stand up people like doing that is is amazing too. So it's tough. That's tough to find. It, <laughs> it really is. is. It is, and uh, we've had some good uh, exchanges with orgs, and then had another one, and they're just kind of lackluster, but. It seems like the Pathfinders just deliver every time. So if you are an org out there and you're, you think you could handle a, a Pathfinder event, give them a call, like hit them up, find them through our channel, whatever you got to do. But they're well, probably, but get in line behind us. Cause yeah, get wanna, in line. Yeah, You want to go get, yeah, yeah you got to get a line behind us first. That's right. <laughs> Take a number first and then hit them up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Your yeah. number will be called when it's the appropriate time. 
<laughs> uh, it's like the DMV. Or, uh, or they're mostly British, right? So you just got to get in queue. Yeah. Get in a queue. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Get in yeah. queue. Get in a queue Behind and us. shut up. Shut <clears throat> up. Right. Um, no, I was super impressed with them. But also, uh, mm-hmm. I was extremely impressed with our guys. So we wanted Oh, my to, gosh. Yes. Yeah. I, like, <clears throat> our guys did. I, I was, I, the position I was in gave me the ability to sort of sit back and see everything from a top, top down view. Right. Mm-hmm. And man, our guys pulled it out. Our guys. Uh, it's, it's one thing when you know that you have the right people, you know, in your community, it's another thing to see them do them right. Like, and just, man, they were fun. It was great. I, I was, I couldn't have been more proud as a community, like, um, you know, uh, founder to, to see these guys sort of do their job and do it well and uh, yeah. adapt on the fly again. Like it, uh, there were many times when I was like, this is it. And it would, you know, it was just an, a quick ad- adaptation from somebody mm-hmm. and w- quickly we're able to regain, you know, recover some lost ground or whatever the case is. Right. Like, yes, it was awesome. And we, we've been really stressing individual actions. Uh, as mm-hmm. a community and on this podcast, and it was awesome to see all of our members really focus on those individual actions. Like we had a few Absolutely. hiccups, um, but that's just because I think we're young uh, as a community, and then a lot of the hiccups yes. too were induced by the, the the bugs in the game as well. So the Overlord Chris Roberts mm-hmm. and his phenomenal marketing team. <laughs> yeah, all the marketing. Because I'm not even shitting on the devs. I, I'm not even going to give the devs shit this time, right? Like, this is 1,000% Chris Roberts' view, and then some poor dev is, like, being forced to <laughs> shove this down people's throats, That's right? a good point, yeah. Like, upper management <laughs> is, get your head straight up there, CIG. Uh, you and I have a friend who's a developer, and I'm just picturing him, like, chained to a desk. <laughs> like, okay, sir, like... <laughs> Anyway. Sorry, I didn't mean to like insinuate devs at CIG are, are sla- enslaved, but no. at some point, like they they can say that's not a good idea. And if Chris Roberts was like, "No, give me camera two, and then they have to fucking do it, right? Or <laughs> they don't have one, a job. Camera two, camera yeah. one. Go back to camera three. Yeah, no. Uh, it's it's interesting though, because like the devs, Chris Roberts is creating the mountain, and the devs have to scale it. Like that's right. Yeah, yeah. they're the guys ones doing it. So. Yeah, we'll get into the bugs a little bit later, but I wanted to talk about the op. Um, first off, like, what do you think? Should we dive into kind of what? Well, let's set the stage, and then we'll we'll pick sure, a direction yeah. to go. So, the operation was Operation Dalton Fury. It was an operation that the Pathfinders uh, presented and very well written. Um, Echo and I super well, <laughs> super yeah. I think they've done them a couple times. They they rotate their missions, the ones that are good. So they've done a lot of planning on these things, and they're in line with a lot of the stuff we've talked about. Um, you know, <laughs> situ- like op orders, um, laying out the logistics of a of a certain thing, setting the expectations of things as well. So, uh, just it was Bamses, awesome, baby. Yeah, yeah, Bamps is all day. Begin planning, arrange mm-hmm. reconnaissance, make reconnaissance, issue your orders. No, sorry, complete plan, issue orders, supervise. If I knew how to spell, I'd probably be better. Wow, I can't count. We know that from last night. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That was funny. So uh, things kicked off, and basically we were the defending force. Um, And we'll talk about that because the Pathfinders definitely had the harder job. They had the short end of that stick. That's an understatement. Yeah. Yeah, they definitely had the short end of the stick on that one. Yeah, and the fact that it was, I mean, they did, they just, the tenacity, it was just insane. Um, and their adaptability. We'll dive into that. But we were yeah, for sure. We were tasked with holding a cave, and we had um, some items that they needed to retrieve uh, in, in a certain amount of time from a fortified position within a cave. And we were kind of yep. role-playing as outlaws or pirates, and we had some crucial like intelligence or something like that that would enable a marine pathfinder unit to be deployed, right? That they would be the ones receiving this type of mission. So it was cool. It had an in-game. It tied in with uh, in-game reason, and it tied in with their lore, and uh, we were just glad to be a part of it. So, oh, yeah. yeah, we fortified a cave position, and it was a cave that you couldn't access on foot. It had to be accessed via uh, something that flies. So to get out of that cave, yep. you had to fly out. To get into it you and land safely, you had to fly in. 
So um, I'll kind of let you talk about that. You Echo was the ground force commander from our troops. So what did that look like when we, we went down to fortify this cave? I mean, I, it was uh, a lot of good work, like prep work for us to sort of sit and watch and map out. I check off. I, I, dude, the guy's a fucking madman. Just a great guy to have on your side. Mm-hmm. Um, ended up mapping out the the place in the cave where we were going to be, um, you know, setting up positions and understanding the difference between cover and concealment and utilizing it. Um, understanding like, and having a plan for like, what happens if people come through, not just once, but multiple times, um, setting that up, just getting a lay of the landing, understanding, like we call it red, red selling or red hatting in in the military world, uh, where you kind of put the the hat of of your enemy on right Mm -hmm. enemy in this case, and sort of opponent and, and sort of play it as if you were them, right? Like, how would you take it over? How would you do it? And there was a lot of great back and forth. I think in that one, uh, I don't have it up anymore, but in that one little, uh, like initial recon channel we had, I, there was over like four or 500 lines of text that, that were submitted, like just with all kinds of great ideas and, you know, it's devil's advocate and, and setting all that up. And then, the ability to sift through all that, find a good plan and then disseminate that plan to each individual team. And then each member on that team, that was really cool. I was sort of hands off on that because I knew I wasn't going to, if I was going to be in the cave, I wasn't going to be really affecting anything in the cave. My job was to coordinate everything like uh, coordinate mm-hmm. air and reinforcements and all that stuff. So me being tactically involved in the cave while I had some input it, like my say wasn't final there because it they're the ones that are in the cave. They're the ones that are fighting. My task to them was, you know, don't let anybody in this cave, right? Like that was my task. And they did a phenomenal job at ensuring nobody got in that cave. And if they did, they were, they were, weren't along very uh, alive very long. Yeah. Um, so we had picked out some, some LPOP positions, uh, listening posts out, out uh, observation post positions to sort of gather more information from how, you know, and, and just running rehearsal after rehearsal landing and getting off and, and setting everything up and prepping. And, you know, we had done a, a full dress rehearsal with the OIC. So thank you OIC for mm-hmm. um, taking on that ridiculous task of trying to get into that cave and uh, highlighting some issues there for us. Right. Um, poke some holes in our plan with that. Um, so we had a lot of time to plan and practice and rehearse for this and um, the team leaders, Chenkov and Vesper, did a really fantastic job. The team members were incredible uh, in the cave with their individual actions and understanding, like, okay, I, my job is to sit behind this rock and shoot in this direction. And no, like, as far as I know, nobody really, like, we started losing people, right? But nobody really lost their mind or got over eager and left their positions. And because of that, that, you know, we've talked about individual actions because of that, the team was successful in, mm-hmm. in repelling assault after assault from the pathfinders. So uh, it was, it's, it was awesome. It was awesome. Uh, my was. side, logistically, there were some issues, um, uh, not only bugs, but just some, uh, we'll call it uh, ignorance on my part, as far as the logistics goes, because I'm learning this stuff too, as, as I play, I, I understand the tactics but some of this higher level stuff is a little bit newer to me. So learning it and doing it and applying it are all different things. And it's a learning experience. So I learned some stuff uh, on the logistics side and the coordination side from that as well. So um, how to do things better, more efficient, uh, you know, that, that, that sort of thing. So, yeah, dude, it was, I mean, uh, from our stat, we, there's a lot of things we can improve on and we've already bashed that with our guys. It's very oh. small stuff though. Like fundamentally, Everyone kept their heads. Their demeanor was fantastic. And I think part mm-hmm. of that is because we had so much confidence in the plan that we had rehearsed, right? So yes. training and planning and, and training training breeds confidence. They'll tell you that all night and day in the, in the military. So the more you train and the more you train correctly is important, then the better you'll fight, right? Yep. You, you, you fight like you train. So, so we did a great job there. Um, and it says a lot about you too, Echo. As a ground force commander, a lot of times in real life and also in a video game, if you're the leader, you're probably doing 80 to 90% of the, the stuff. 
uh, I call them points of friction, where there's a, a crucial part of your plan that you need to rely on somebody who needs to have a certain skill or a, a high enough skill to execute that particular thing to make the mission go off. Like, um, yeah, like a dropship pilot, he's responsible for getting troops to the ground. Right, that's a point of friction. Um, a, a grenadier, someone who's using a, a grenade launcher to deny access to an area or uh, entry denial or like hitting those crucial dead space areas. Like you want to have someone who's a little bit more capable. And so you just kind of trusted all of our privateers to make those choices and to execute. And that says a lot about you as a leader. So I appreciate you, man. Like I got to shout you out on the, on this podcast because not many leaders are capable of that. They will, uh, they will micromanage and get in the way and intervene and then next thing you know, they're the ones making the shot, you know, the buzzer beater kind of thing. You know, they're the ones right. doing everything. And sometimes you got it, right? But the yeah, fact that you there's a fine it, line of like awesome. taking taking over, but also understanding what your role is, right? And that mm -hmm. varies from the rifleman up to a squad leader, platoon leader, commander, all that stuff, right? Like yeah. all of that stuff has a certain thing a certain set of responsibilities and expectations and um, not just in gaming, but even in the real military, people overstep those boundaries. Right. And yeah. I've unfortunately been on the receiving end of a lot of bad leadership like that in the military. And it's just something that I decided that if I ever become a leader, which I did, I was able to, you know, in the military do some of that stuff I wasn't going to do. Like if I knew, you know, Tim could do the radio, Tim did the radio and, I was hands off. I, yeah. I need these frequencies programmed and I need to be able to reach these distances at these times under these weather conditions. There's your task. And, you know, usually uh, either Tim or Chris had it set up, right? Like, and they were, they were good and they did their job and they did it yeah. well. So. Yeah. And that's, that's where we're at now with the privateers where we have the right people in place and an echo can state very clearly. And this is an important note. If you're in a position of leadership in an org or you're hoping to be, give them clear like def de like defined intentions like you have to define the commander's intent right if you don't have a clear intention or, or something that you're trying to achieve it's really hard to disseminate orders to people to get them done yeah to to chain all these these this preparation together to have what you need yep. to get it done so if you're in a leadership position you have to be able to you know let let go go hands off and trust your teammates and then just work on explaining your intentions clearly. Um, and part of that was due to the pathfinders just because they have an excellent op order structure. So the intention was set. It was clear. It was, it was in stone. So echo could go hands off and let us and our team leaders develop tactical level plans and accomplish his intentions. It was, it just went really well. Um, yeah. so we basically set up in this cave <laughs> and, uh, and just waited for the pathfinders to come, come a looking, come looking for those, uh, their objectives was to get that sensitive material out of our possession within 90 minutes. Yeah. Which is fucking hard. Right. <clears throat> and I, I'm not sure uh, <sighs> pathfinders, maybe you can leave this in the comments too. Like, I know you've done operation Dalton fury before. I don't know if it was met with as much resistance as us. <clears throat> Um, but that's something to consider, uh, just the access point that we had there. That's, it was, it made our job really easy because there, that cave is a bottleneck. Um, there's a big juicy, but, but still small and containable kill zone that we set up on. And we, we thought of other places in the cave and Tycho, we, we had a good chat with him about it and his information. And it, he realized it made sense. What they did make sense. Like it was just a good exchange all around. So we set it up. It was. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. It was. It was just the task that the Pathfinders had. And I, I seriously, to the Pathfinders ground forces, like, wow, man. Like, I straight up would have told my commander to go fuck themselves if they gave <laughs> me that mission. Like, that's right. A, that genuine, like in real life, not, you know, not in the, don't tell your commanders to go fuck themselves in your communities. <laughs> like, yeah. But in real life, I probably would have been like, uh, sir, that's a dumb fucking idea. Right. Like that's a, that's a, that's a hard attack. And it then is. 
then you couple that in with star citizen and all the bugs or lack of tools that we have available like very simply our defense could have been beaten with something as simple as a smoke grenade right it would have made yeah. it a more dynamic experience it would have uh put the momentum back in in swing of the pathfinders it's just the way that it was set up with the current 316 patch uh like it oh, that's yeah it, oh, such a hard task and i have the utmost just professional respect for these guys for like conducting that task like just mm -hmm. and they did it to learn more about themselves right like that and that to me is uh, a high honor of respect for me so yeah and and those those type of situations in a video game are extremely frustrating especially in star yes. citizen like because some of you guys you're used to just you, some of you know you, if you're a solo player you know how frustrating it is to lose equipment and gear and the time it takes to set your kit up imagine coordinating that with you know 25 people on each team a full server of 50 people Trying to coordinate yeah. spawning, getting gear efficiently, getting the proper equipment and kit, and we all know how many bugs. Like Echo and I, we put we put undersuits on our on our ship to spawn and use, and no, nope, Chris Roberts said no, nah, not two, today. You're two, good. You don't need free. those. No, nope, he said no undersuits for you. So yeah. uh, luckily, we have contingencies and we have teammates that could toss us a suit here and there. So it worked out. Um, but yeah, we all know the moment, the monumental task it is just to organize on a logistical level in this game. And the Pathfinder's execution was insane, right? The tactical situation mm -hmm. is a nightmare. Charging, uh, charging through an essential, like a, a fortified defense with minimal forces, right? Cause the rule of attack, if you're going to attack a defended position, you, it's a three-to-one rule. The attacking force should have three men to every one of theirs. You should outnumber yep. them greatly. That's just warfare. If you're attacking a defended yep. position, you are at, ex at extreme disadvantage. And the fact that the Pathfinders were able to push in and level the flame, or like just keep us on our heels, like in that dire of a situation, blew my mind how quickly they organized, how quickly they got back to the fight, and how hard they hit when they did hit. Right. And like, luckily, the odds were still in our favor. We just had to stay true. And this is where I commend the privateers. You just had to stay yeah. disciplined, uh, understand your timing to reload, do not getting tunnel vision on one target, and staying in your lanes and your sectors of fire. And that's so fucking hard for video gamers to do, <sighs> to get down. People. It is incredibly hard. Like, I, I don't uh, want that to be an understated thing for yep. someone in a video game to just be like, it's a fucking video game. Fuck this. My life doesn't matter. Yeah. I'm just going to run up there and do something fucking crazy. But they didn't. And that is, uh, to me, is just as fucking mental uh, of, a, of a task as the Pathfinder's trying to attack a tiny hole. Right. With, you know, dug in defenders, man. Like they're both like they're both equally just as like difficult to 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 do. So. Right. They're, yeah, they're equal. They're difficult tasks. But with the situation. The situation was definitely in our favor because we were, we didn't, well, yeah, we didn't yeah. need to attack. We we were being attacked. So it's like, sure. that's just the mm -hmm. laws of combat, right? A fortified position right. is always better than not. And moving is usually associated with dying. <laughs> in yeah. a lot of cases, it's better to be fortified. So, yeah, I was just impressed all around. Privateers, excellent work, all of you. Um, I, I got about two minutes of firefighting in before uh, I the bugs just consumed my character like a cancer i'm just in the back i can't even brandish a weapon i can't reload anything i can't fire so i'm just sitting there with full complement of ammo and not being able to do anything so i ended up walking out like um kind of like enemy at the gates when he uh he out of pure sadness he just uh, he sacrifices himself to the the german sniper so the main character can find him and go flank him um, that's kind of what it was. I just walked into the opening, like, take me pathfinders. And I, I was so bugged. I couldn't even sprint. I just had to walk in there. <laughs> I just got lit the fuck up. Um, yeah. and then, uh, hoots re replied in kind to avenge me with some, uh, grenade, uh, grenade launcher volley. So it was mm. just an interesting op. So let's, uh, let's dive into the pathfinder side of things. So we're kind of sure. speculating here. We have some good info from Tycho, who is the leader of the mm -hmm. pathfinders. Um, yep. Let's dive into that. What do you got? 
their point of view, their yeah. perspective. Uh, so, uh, you know, he, he, a lot of stuff, right? Like he's right. He talks about, you know, a Moab would have been best, but we wanted the fight. And we, and this is, again, goes to touch on the professionalism of the pathfinders yeah. and working with them. It's like, Hey, we found that a Moab kills everything in the cave. That would probably be best to do that, but they didn't because they understood like what our objectives were and what their objectives were. And it would be wetter if we just let our boys, you know, gunfight it out and have some fun with it. Right. Mm. Um, you could still learn a lot from there. Um, you know, there was a bug with the O2 um, in the cave where you, it, it would drain while you were in the cave, but oxygen pens weren't working. So, you know, to add a little bit of difficulty mm. and give them a little bit more momentum since they weren't coming at us at a three to one, like, you know, having to exit the cave and gather air, like, yeah. Those are things that our t our side had to sort of coordinate and like repel, like almost attack outside, yeah. attack to the ledge of the cave to get. We had know, to fight to breathe air. Yeah, we had to fight yeah. to breathe. And and I felt like that was important to keep in there for us just to. Yes, we're dug in and, you know, uh, yeah, I don't. Yeah. So that, you know, another uh, thing he brought up would have been just waiting on us like knowing that our o2 was draining mm -hmm. and knowing that we would have to come out for it like that could have given them an upper hand to be able to counter attack or counter ambush us as we had to come out for air and, and things like that so um really good perspectives that he i think took away from that but on all in all like you know they're they're practicing on their combat spacing and um you know breaking in on a defended position like yeah high you know high casualty rates and dealing with that and you know it, like there was a lot of difficult like objectives they or, or hurdles they had to sort of overcome and i appreciate their ability to focus on those and like all right how are we going to overcome this right and you talked about their tenacity and ability to do they um, organize so first, fast they were yeah, back well, at us. not only reorganize, but then come back with a different tactic, a not, new tactic. you know, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting mm -hmm. different results. That was not the case. I think each time they attacked, they had a different way that they were coming in. Um, it was so their leadership on that level to just sort of on the spot, come up with different tactics to, to, to try was incredible. Um, a couple of times, almost overwhelming us uh, and, and winning that fight, like, and dislodging us which was that's uh, already a hard task to do Super and impressive. to do it like that f with us fully manned like at not having lost anybody at that point like that's that's impressive you know yeah and like right now in the state of the game um and like you guys tell me if you agree with this in the comments or not because people i think people sometimes forget about these factors so the end game is a living breathing persistent universe <clears throat> that you will have more options, right? And people have lives. Like, you need to be able to log in and out of the game and still have your shit and all of your progress protected somehow. So mm -hmm. if this was in that, let's say the game was finished and this scenario arose, I'm sure that Tycho and <clears throat> the Pathfinders, they would have opted for more of a siege tactic. They would have yeah. smoked us out, waited us out, uh, blocked yep. off all logistical supplies, cut off reinforcements, like, and isolated us over days of gameplay. Like, imagine right. how cool that's going to be in the future. So we probably would have, had we had air, we probably would have fallen back as we lost numbers as well to try to canalize them even further. Yeah. So they're still canalized, but they're fighting smaller groups of people. So it's an attrition war at that point as well. When you say air, you mean like, oxygen, right? Like the O2. Or like air support. Yeah, yeah. So okay. Oxygen, sorry. Okay. Yeah, oxygen. So you know, yeah, we would have we had that. Back. You know, we probably would have fallen back and fallen back into a tighter crevice. Mm -hmm. It would have been small, a smaller amount of people. So our forces are now divided. So instead of fighting twelve, there may be fighting four in one pocket and you know five in another pocket, which is hugely detrimental to us. And as also, defenders, when we split our forces and yes. stuff. So, and it also could be detrimental to the attackers if if they commit all forces to one or they don't commit enough to both one yeah. side gets overwhelmed the defenders us in this case could have flanked right like there's so many more variables could have. and that was i our don't think original plan the, right we with wanted. the combat intelligence that the ue ha the pathfinders have i don't like i i fully trust that they would have 
you know, had oh, yeah. people stationed at positions to secure, you know, in, in, in an egress, ingress and egress Absolutely. routes, um, to, you know, very mindful of those counterattacks and, and sort of, uh, that's a really their, good point. uh, our, our ability, you know what I mean? So it's like, yeah, they're, when we say I, professionalism, we mean like they're not the types to forget to watch their six. Like they're going to lock right, down. Yeah. If they need to lock down. They're going to It's very scary to fight these well. guys. It is. And like, that's why we had to come out. We had to just guard that first initial entrance with such tenacity. And we threw all mm. our chips at that one entrance. Uh, we had 12 For 90 guns. minutes. Yeah. We had 12 guns looking at that opening. And two of them were grenade launchers. For 12 people to hold a position for 90 minutes is not an insurmountable task. Like that or is not an insignificant task. Like that is, I mean, things start, oxygen starts weighing on you, food and water. Like, even though it's kind of broken, it's still a thing, right? Like Mm -hmm. you're in the middle of sipping a water while they push their counter attack, uh, push another attack through. Now they've caught you off guard, right? Running to different spots to pick up ammo, right? Or, in yeah, the re- middle of reloading or whatever, like those are yeah, those healing. tactical pauses that we Medical. have to, yeah, healing that we have to take, you know, those are, those are weakness, weak points for us, you know? Yeah. And, and we're, so, it's very constricting. Cause if, you know, we, we had to concede like the, the opening. So being online with the opening of the cave, yeah, we had to kind of concede that and stay hidden in these slices of the cave where we have the most advantage, forcing them to make entry. Because if we get in right. a shootout, we learned that against the OAC, uh, an ally that helped us prep for this. They they attacked our defenses, and we had a lot of guys online, um, and we all we all were getting shot going down. Like take, they were taking guns out of the fight, um, and so then Echo and uh, and everybody we were able to brainstorm, and, and Echo approved and submitted his idea of getting everybody offline. So we readjusted, and that helped us yeah. tremendously against the Pathfinders, but. Um, yeah, not a either way. They're very, very tough either way. And uh, well, luckily, but that limits us, right? It does. To your point, that limits where we can go. It denies access to us movement inside that cave, even though we own it. Like we had very limited routes and very limited places we could go to conduct some of those, you know, uh, like yeah, individual actions of grabbing more ammo, grabbing no a different weapon, egress. getting he- like our medics moving back and forth to heal people, like. Yeah. It was, and it was I, not a cakewalk inside that thing. And dude, like even us getting caught lacking, like if this was a more dynamic or um, emergent gameplay situation and we were on the run from the actual Pathfinders, like in the actual UEE, yeah. I, I wouldn't go to ground in the cave, like maybe, but like there's no egress, right? There's no, yeah. there's no escape. And especially if you don't have oxygen. So that's what's frustrating too. It's just the game bugs. Like there's shit in the game. We have some tools that don't yeah. even fucking work. An I mean, not game. being able to land uh, ships inside of hangars on ships. Uh, you know, the disappearing, oh, yeah. the cleanup script that's so fucking aggressive right now because because of jump town. They're literally or... setting server farms on fire by playing this game. So they have to like you know, tweak things in places. Like I, I don't blame them for running a, 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 like a really stringent cleanup script. Right. But it, it, it ruins things like bodies disappear right away. You know, mm-hmm. our objectives, the objectives that the pathfinders had to get disappeared, you know, like it, 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 all this stuff like sort of adds up onto each other to make the game either frustrating to play or more or less like my, pro- me projecting how I play the game on, on the game right is these large coordinated events yeah and it makes those events frustrating like it used to be in 313 and 314 i can't remember i think 313 was like the most stable patch i ever played i can't remember which one it was exactly but you know those events were fun because it, there wasn't all this logistic yes. in like stuff that we had to worry about and and sometimes it's good to have that stuff in the game. And other times it's just like, you know, my prep for this the week prior was literally spending six hours over a week of time playing this game yeah, to get all my gear into a ship that I needed and then moving that gear to the place that it needed <sighs> to be. And then st- like <laughs> stocking that gear with all the little nick- nooks, you know, things that I needed, med pens, yeah. oxy, well, not oxy pens, but ammo, uh, yeah. attachments and all Kill that life. stuff is spread Grenades, all over the verse. And it's water. like, that's where I spent my time in star citizen was playing 
Yeah. A le- playing Tarkov, backpack manager. And I, playing, it was not fun, but I know I had to be done. Yeah, playing like low, like like 32-bit Tarkov. Like you put something in a pocket, it's not there in 10 minutes. It's gone. You don't know where the hell it went. You take a rifle off your back, it's lost in the eternal sea of all of the weapons that you just happened to collect, you know, in case they decide to let you sell stuff later. Like I condensed, right. I, I spent the same amount of time, probably more, I had the week off, so I was well, just on there. I, I just got rid of and that's, everything in my inventory that wasn't pertinent for the op. Subscriber flare, gone. Put it in a C2, sent it out on self-destruct, and then deleted myself back to the space station. Get rid of all yeah. my extra shit out of my inventory. Inventories are nightmares. Sorry, I had to, like, I had it's to get a nightmare. <laughs> and, and uh, No, I, I'm with you. Like it's a, it, I mean, yes, there are some beauties in, like, there are some, some gems in that legit, like, I, you know, item inventory management screen and such. But for the most part, like it's really frustrating when I spend, I spend 12 hours over a course of a month playing the game dedicated to 90 minutes of gameplay. So to think about yeah. that, if I'm spending three, four hours, you're spending three, four hours, Chenkov, we had 12, uh, in all in all, we had 25 people preparing for this. And if they all spent, let's say an average of two to three hours preparing for this, that's 75 hours of gameplay spent preparing for an hour and a half of gameplay. And yeah. to me, that's wrong. That's wrong. Right. That's so there is nothing okay with that at all. CIG. Like I, sh- we should not have to spend that many game hours preparing for an hour and a half of game time. Right. And it, like, it wouldn't be bad if the shit worked. If I right. put something in my inventory I don't want to be afraid that it's going to disappear when I log off. What I, the question is, when I log off, what is the game going to eat? What is it going to take out of my inventory? Right? Are there any right now? If you put two guns on your back with a backpack, one of those guns is gone. Yeah, you can guarantee it. Absolutely, you can set your fucking watch by it. Yeah, everybody's got like it. It it targets people differently. Like, like for you, it's that one gun. For me, it's like my armor chest piece is always gone. Like, or your helmet. Yeah, so I like even if I strip naked before I log off and put everything into the inventory system, I I still I can't find that exact item again. Um yep. and even if I I use all the hotkey or like the filters, it's just really hard. So I literally got rid of everything cuz a lot of organizations out there, the Pathfinders, we we do the similar thing. We all have like an org uniform. Right? So I literally got rid of every single un- piece of gear that is not in my uniform. And it took me almost two to three days of like my play sessions, my standard play sessions, like an hour and a half. Yeah. So there was like two or three or four days of just logistical management in my inventory to get ready for an op. And that was my point earlier is like, I hope it's not like this right now. We live and die by 90 minutes, right? Mm -hmm. Because that's how much time people have to play. And it does require so much preparation. We have to prep for an op at least a week out. If you're going to like throw some unique opportunity or some operation at somebody, they need about at least a week to get all of their guys up to speed because of life. Now, if this was a 24 seven job, we could be ready in a day, but it's not because everyone's got kids, everything. So the game is not going to be like this. The end game, it's going to be more emergent. You're going to have finite resources. You're going to need to have people online at certain times, right? To do things effectively, but it's going to be emergent. You're going to want to attack a group when, when they're not all online or when they're at half strength, right? Just like you would any enemy. You, if, if they move forces around, you want to hit them when they're weak. But like this situation we forced because the way we play the game, because we have to set up an opportunity or operation for a set amount of time, it forces the pathfinders in this situation to do something that doesn't make any tactical sense, like bum rush a fortified position for a few boxes, like that doesn't make sense, right? So in the future, it will make a lot more sense. That's when Tycho has more opportunities to drop a a bomb on us, to smoke us out, you know, chemical grenades, like, right, cut off our our, our supplies and do more of a siege type tactic on us. Yeah. So he's keeping his life. I also want to highlight how difficult and frustrating we're talking about FPS stuff, right? This is an FPS podcast and everything you just said right now is, is fun to us, right? There's miners, there's people that like to fly in ships. 
And I would argue that all those bugs and everything is turning people away from this type of a gameplay, right? People oh. don't do bunkers on the ground. No, the risk because their shit's missing. Yeah. So yeah, they don't like because the ships are working. Gear. They hop in a ship and do bounties, and and you know there are some masochists like us, right? And the and the pathfinders and OAC and other things that do partake in that stuff, even with the bugs. But like this is our plea. This is why we made the podcast is to talk about this and highlight this kind of stuff so that yeah. This gameplay can be more obtainable point, and 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 approachable to more types of people, right? Um, That's a killer point. It's just, people it's don't just want to engage in FPS. Man. There's, they're never going to get uh, like actual ground combat context. Remember how we talked about that a few episodes ago? The context of CIG's combat is mix, missing. Like, uh, it, we we want a high risk, high reward. That's fine, <laughs> but when the game is actively fighting you to organize like we need some quality of life in this sense of the game if you're doing first person shooter stuff if you're even just trying to organize an organization like an org or a a corporation whatever you want to label yourself as in the star citizen universe even if you're a mining group like you are still lacking tools to transfer funds have shared ship ownership a a hangar that you can go hang out in and and, and you know team up to repair a ship or stuff like that like that's what i want how cool would it be is if we had a a combined space that we could all share that i could give players permissions on my ships to go use that i could dedicate a ship use usable for the community that i'm a part of so like there needs to be more org org tools for those organizations and there just needs to be more (laughs) more logistical tools because it I, I'm sure some of the people in the Pathfinders had like a kind of a sour taste in their mouth, right? And I would have, I would have too. I mean, it was a I great. Fight. If I'm a Pathfinder right now, I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of miffed, right? Mm-hmm. Like I would be. But I mean, they're professional, so I'm not saying they they were or they show that at all. <clears throat> but just knowing myself and that type of mission, <clears throat> excuse me, I know that I would be like, oh, man, I'm a little bummed, you know? Yeah. And I was bummed because I got I got into the fight for two seconds and then bugged out. I know you were bugged too because you had some glitches and you know I, I wasn't. I was just antsy and frustrated with the bugs, <laughs> yeah. so I killed myself by accident. But. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I forgot. Yeah. It's yeah. the equivalent and of then, you not um, turning on your ship shield, or your tank shields. Yeah, shame on us for not having a more robust <laughs> respawn and reinforcement plan. But you know, but the plan we did have, the game ate probably seventy five percent of our ships that we were going to use for that. So we had all of our eggs in one basket, and it was a Pisces. Yeah. <laughs> so whoever shot us, uh, yeah, and shame on you. You're right, shame on us for that. But I mean, what what did we do in that situation? Yeah, you know, like, like the um, we did have another part of our plan. So Pathfinders, you might find this interesting, but in that opening, we were going to canalize, trying to canalize your movement even more, because um, if you if you put certain gear and equipment in like a C two, and then you self detonate that or self destruct it, it will leave those cargo boxes. So we were going to put about four or five of those with tractor beams just in the middle, in the fray, just to make it one more obstacle, kind of use them as barricades to, to canalize your movement or maybe take some guns out of the fight for a little bit while you tractor beam them out of the way. Um, they're easily defeated. They're, it just takes more steps. It just adds to the chaos. And mm-hmm. we had planned that and rehearsed it multiple times. And then on game day, I, that was my job. I flew a C2 down there, landed it, and self-destructed it like normal, (laughs) and it blows up and didn't give me any boxes. The game just ate 11. That's the the, uh, equation. You put 11 Novaco suits, undersuits, right, the big bulky Novacos, in a C2 or whatever, a big ship that can hold them, and you blow them up, it will spawn multiple cargo boxes to hold that cargo. So it persists. But I think it's because of the such aggressive like cleanup scripts. Like it just, it didn't even know what to do with them. It just f- fucking wiped them. <laughs> so, yeah. so here we are. Uh, one element of our plan gone. It wasn't, you know, game breaking or anything, but it was just annoying. We're like, we prepped for that. And then the game, yeah. the game chose to take it away from us. Well, so, and this is what, interesting shit. I mean, I'm digressing a little bit from the operation, but I, you know, this is to me, it's important to talk about, you know, the focus and and attention that CIG and its team spend on certain aspects of the game. I really feel like 
our the gameplay that we want to play is just secondary to everything else it doesn't make money it um it's the last thing that's thought about is the is the person on on the ground right um which is so weird you now have yeah you now have an entire chunk of the company working on squadron 42 which is bittersweet and i'll tell you why it's bittersweet it's bitter because we now know that that's going to take away like we're probably going to get less shit over 2022 for the pu because a majority a bulk of those teams are now working on squadron 42 it's sweet because when that game does come out when that single player squadron 42 does come out it will allow those teams to come back and reanalyze like Mm. right now everything's being built for squadron 42 so like there there is no in my mind there is no pragmatic approach to building things for the pu even with all the teams working on it because everyone's going oh well we need this for squadron 42 all right cool build it put it in the pu test it cool that didn't work we'll rip it back out we'll we'll change it completely up so the things that we're testing now may not even be things that we use in the future right yeah that's good which point. is frustrating as a gamer yeah it's like are we but when they co- gonna get a new flight model or something like they did years back where they changed the flight model like three times you know like that could right. essentially happen it there's no there's no hint of that so don't get worried like i'm just using it as an example <laughs> You know, yeah. if you're listening, <laughs> but that is a topic yeah. of a discussion, right? I, I, but the, so now we're left with this, with this impartial game that we we're pretty sure we're not going to see much movement on over this year, at least maybe we will, maybe, I, maybe I'm wrong. And I hope I am wrong. Uh-huh. Um, but Me when too. they come back to reanalyze the game, the focus will be the PU, right? And that's where the sweetness comes in is that all those teams will come rushing back focusing on the pu and and pragmatically a, a, approaching like oh, okay well crawl rock qu- crawl walk run right we, everybody is a first and foremost a, a a playable it has a character a body a thing let's focus on that and then build up from there how do they fit into the yeah. ships how do they fit into their environments how do the npcs react to that right like and yeah. then when we got this game, it was about the ships because that was the easiest thing to build and it made the most money, right? That's where we're, why we're at 440 million. And I am not knocking Star Citizen for that, like CIG for that. Good for you. You've crowdfunded a game, but now we're at the point where you have fans of this game, dedicated fans. And we're kind of like, oh, okay. The allure, right? has been, it's the curtain's been pulled back and we understand the game yeah. and the development process and everything. And we're just saying like, well, that doesn't make sense to us. Why are you not, why are you doing it that way when, yeah, you know, the, the common shiny, sense to me says this, right? The shiny new ship allure is, is, is gone for most people. Yeah. We're excited. We're like, cool, new ships. That's cool. But like, uh, yeah. come on. I get and I genuinely love this stuff. game. I love the devs. <laughs> yeah. I love CR's vision. I really do. Like mm-hmm. I am sold. I'm not going anywhere, but I, I feel like I have some room to be able to criticize a little bit, right? Especially as a content creator now. Like I think it's, it's imperative as content creators. We don't, we don't weaponize our viewers, but we, you know, we, we voice our frustrations. Yeah. We're not going to lay down in the public. Right. Yeah. And, and get that out there. And then we can move forward together as a community and a developer Mm -hmm. working together to create the game that we all want to play. Right. In, in reality. Yeah, and I guess to kind of summarize that this topic, like we're we're talking about this because we experienced a lot of bugs over the last weeks preparing for this op against the Pathfinders, and it was still a great op um, because yeah. of the level of professionalism that we both have. So here we are on our platform, stuck in the nail. We can gripe, we can bitch. We're here bitching, so that's how we do. I love you, CIG. Yeah, but we we're really in it. Do. We're here. Like we we want to help with these things. The community can help with these things. There's a lot of people that ha- share our perspectives and then also can expound on it better than we can too. So like, yeah, you know, we're just here to get it out there. Um, yeah, I digress super hard there. No, Sorry. it's good. This is Discord it's, all over again. Yeah, I know the Pathfinders, <laughs> they experience their share of bugs too. And, and we just have right. contingencies for things, but it is very limiting in our gameplay and stuff. So, um, but yeah, back to the op. I thought both sides did fantastic. Um by by definition, I guess the privateers, we were successful in stopping their win conditions from being met. But I think it was mm-hmm. a win all around as far as like just getting a good old fashioned fucking gunfight 
you know hell in, yeah in man cave. it was fun so and the good. guys had fun right and then really at the end of the day it's a game uh one of our our compatriots from the mighty eight said it the best like it's a game and i think all of us had fun and at the end of the day that's win lose whatever like i had a blast you know yeah and uh and we gained a lot too we learned a lot about mm -hmm. uh you know us us as teammates and we we saved that those instances and those individual actions that we did that's all saved in the team data bank so we can pull on that yeah. and say hey this is similar to that cave we did or this is a very similar situation or whatever comes up um but we did or, have some good ideas in the form of aars too right yeah yeah and before we dive into the aars like i want i kind of want to highlight some of the ideas we had um sure. that kind of threw the pathfinders off a little bit hopefully it was something new for you guys but we we were able to slip a nox two nox bikes into that cave uh it's doable it's just a little tricky so we got them in there and we didn't want to use them like we're like haha size one guns bitch like that's cool. We wanted to use and the headlights. Yeah. So we basically used yeah. them as just um, like big spotlights. Uh, spotlights. Yeah. That would just what you would do if you were in a defense. You oh, would absolutely. have giant, you know, yes, you would have turrets and emplacements and towers and all that shit too. But and sandbags. Spotlights are super, super dope. Yeah. I thought that was a brilliant was idea. A brilliant idea. That, I mean, I don't know who. I'm walking into the cave to two giant, bright, flashing. I'm like, I'm already disoriented, you know? <laughs> yeah, and it, and it gave us a lot of advantage. And they kind of countered it, though, because there are some some graphical glitches where a spotlight from a ship will shine through and illuminate the whole cave. Oh, yeah. So, like, good on them. Like, that's just in the game. So they countered it a couple times. Mm -hmm. They didn't do it on every one of their pushes. I think if they did, it would have been a little bit different story because it kind of equaled the lighting no longer. Like, they were yeah. running into the light. Um it was cool. So, yeah, so that was awesome. The box thing didn't work out. We were hoping to use those as barricades. Um, but all the positions that we chose ended up working out great. Um, grenade launchers, dude, again, just I props to the Pathfinders for not shying away from grenade launchers. Yes. That's a big, big thing for a lot of people. They think that game la or grenade launchers are game-breaking, that they're, you know, they're not fun. So th the answer is to allow them, but, you know, put some restrictions on them. And, and we're not the type of group that's going to have everyone have a grenade launcher. That's just, that's cheesy to me. Yeah. Well, there's, there's pros and cons with that, right? Like if yeah. you're a four man group inside of a cave, you have all, you have all this, the displacement and, and dispersion to fire four grenade launchers into a hole. But when you have 12 people in a cave, 12 people with grenade launchers that gets a little bit scary, especially <laughs> when people are whipping around trying to shoot other people. Like, eh, I don't know that I want 12 grenade launchers going off inside that cave. Yeah. And then if, if this is the, the arc that the warfare would take, like from a more realistic standpoint in star citizen era, they have hinted that they're going to have like a mech suit for people. Now getting inside of a small confined space, like a building, like room to room fighting, uh, that mech suit might be obsolete, maybe inside of a cave, but that's when grenade launchers make sense is when there is a more mechanized, like master chief style power suit or some sort of, you know, mech that someone's in. Right. Um, well, it's an area denial tool too. Yeah. Right. Like it, I mean, you put a grenade and within five meters, you, nobody's going to go in that area. Right. Or yep. if you spread that left and right lateral limits to 15 meters, now you have, mm -hmm. you know, 25 meters of space that are, are pretty much denied by grenades going off, you know? So right. in, a, <clears throat> in an open environment or even in a closed one, like we were, right, we could close that door all day with two grenade launchers and that was efficient enough, but they still have a cadence. They still have Flush. reloads. They still have all this other stuff that they have to maintenance that they have to do to keep that. It's not just hold a trigger and Grenades just fire out right. forever too, you know. Right. It still takes a lot of user proficiency to mm -hmm. to deny an area like that um, for a extended for ninety minutes. Like for those of you who don't have the context, like a firefight. What's the average firefight time? Like a minute, maybe minute and a half, two minutes. Like depending where you are in the world, like it's probably different. But like a actual right. combat engagement, a firefight, rounds exchanging. Is usually about two minutes long, tops. They're so fast. Now, depending on where you are in Afghanistan, I'm sure you got in a lot of extended firefights that probably went 30 minutes to an hour to like 
a full day sometimes, right? Yeah. Yeah, so it depends on where you are and, and the terrain and everything. But, like, you know, if a cop's getting in a shootout, that's usually, like, probably 10 seconds. Uh, yeah. It depends on the job you're doing. So to, to hold a position in a firefight for 90 minutes, that is... In real life, that's that's a that's a horrifying task, like to be in a, a sustained firefight for that long. Um, yes, very much. <laughs> so, I've been in those sustained firefights, man. Yeah. They're not like they are not what you see in the movies, man. I, I've I've been in like f- fucking multiple day firefights, and it's like there are oh, times there are imagine. times of <laughs> downtime, but like it, it's not really downtime. You're just not being shot at, and you yeah. don't know when that's going to happen again. So <laughs> yeah, it's not downtime if you're still holding your shit and you can't piss, and if you move, <laughs> yeah, exactly, you're just like I got to piss or shit my pants right now, like. Now, I've, I've never been in extended firefights. The, the, my combat experience is a little different because of the different job. But, like, sure. you know, it's – I can't only imagine, dude. So 90 minutes in a cave or 90 minutes pushing a cave. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's crazy. That's a lot of reinforcements. That's a lot of downed friends. That's a lot of lost equipment, logistics. Like, it costs a lot to assault in, yeah. a, in, a, in a firefight. So, um, overall – I guess we can kind of wrap it up. Now, how are we doing on time? We're at like 57 minutes. Okay. So yeah, that's good. So we, we've hit on the op a lot, <laughs> but th- there will be videos in the, uh, mm-hmm. and the pathfinders, they always do some high quality uh, videos too of their. Oh uh, dude. I like, you have to go. I, like I'm excited for them to release the, the video of this op from yeah. their perspective because it's so well done it's well edited. It's got, I, dude, you got to go to their, I, I'll put their YouTube down in the description. Go and watch their channel. I'll put their website, all that stuff. <laughs> go watch their stuff, man. It's super cool to watch. You get an insight without, I, it's just tastefully done, man. It's just, it's a cool <laughs> video to watch and it's fun and entertaining. Yeah. And we'll, we'll stop brown nose and, and, you know, we'll get off our knees. I'm not brown nose. I'm genuinely a fan of the Pathfinders. I know. We man. are, I think but like, cool people. We'll, we'll, we'll tone it down a minute, but we're just extremely excited. I mean, I love privateers way more, but I am oh, yeah. a fan of the Pathfinders. I'm a fan too. That we had, they gave us a good run and not, we hope we did yeah. the same. And we're just excited to work with them in the future because they have kind of the same mentality we have. Um, yeah. And we, it's, we consider them like a, a true peer. Um, we have sure. a couple orgs that we consider peers, but like, it's cool yeah. to add another one, right? So, yep, we're excited. Um, but yeah, we, we were talking about logistics. Um, another thing we were talking about server caps too. It's super limiting right now for big scale things. <sighs> Again, all this boils back into servers, right? And like the back end kind of stuff. And my yeah. my hats, my heart, everything that I can give my emotions on my sleeve to the server guys for cig right now like if i could send you cheeseburgers every day i would 100 percent just like <laughs> cheeseburgers. Eat you all cheeseburgers what was the most crucial thing to developing oh well we got, i mean you know what i mean like we got random cheeseburgers probably... from this guy in south carolina <laughs> <laughs> yeah right like he like those poor guys they are doing everything they can to make this game keep this game playable for us and and i'm i'm very very much appreciative of that yeah um, and when we when you so say upper poor, management at CIG, stop pushing shitty patches that these poor guys have to work their asses off to maintain. Yeah, yeah, and the, I mean I don't know, I'm with you on that one, but it's like, it's like we we gotta, it doesn't feel like it, sometimes it feels like we get a ton of progress, and then it's like in some areas we're taking two steps, steps back. back. Yeah, we're like oh my gosh, yeah. like yeah we fixed every we got all this cool shit, and it's like well the tool that you've had in the game since nearly the beginning well, oxygen pen doesn't work. So when I, cool. sub, when I sub <laughs> to this game, when I like fully bought on, got on board and bought my first ship mm-hmm. uh, back in 2015, whenever it was, I, I was very much looking forward to the, to the barista. And I'm finally glad that in 2022, everybody, <laughs> we will get a barista and yeah. it will serve me coffee. And you know what? I probably will just do an uninstall after that. That is the only thing I wanted to do in this game. And I'm my hats off to Chris Roberts for pushing and upper management for pushing the barista. So thank you. And um, I don't think I need to play your your game anymore. Once I receive a coffee from an AI. Yeah. There you have it folks. We'll be uh, (laughs) the privateers are as soon as that barista is up, you know, we're going to be baristas. We're hanging our hat. We're gonna be. Yeah. We're gonna retire from from ground force combat. 
and uh, you know FPS stuff, and we're just going to be baristas in the in the verse. Baristas, yep. Yeah. Well, I'll have you know, me and Echo, uh, we once we once we were bored and we did some RP at Cassaba for like three hours at Grimhex. Yep. We just acted like NPCs in Cassaba. And we would stand like in emoji stuff, and then like someone would walk in, and we'd be like, "Oh, hey, what's up?" <laughs> uh, that was some of the, the the best Star Citizen moments I've had was at that day was at good. Kasaba, just role yeah. playing like we were like, "Well, do you know?" Oh, you know why sale? we did that? Because the game was fucking broken then too. Oh yeah, the game was broken, but we still wanted. <laughs> That's to That's why we did that. That's right. Uh, we're like, "Hey, uh, do you know we're having a sale on some Anvil Aerospace hats? Thirty yeah. percent off on it the was jeans. a good time." Get some boots. The, res- the response from players was, which is what made it worth it. And yeah, because people it required be like, CIG to do nothing but make a beautiful JPEG for us to stand in. So exactly. <laughs> um, what else did we have? Oh, we were going to talk about the power of AARs, an after-action yeah. report, right? Um, Super helpful. I know that the Pathfinders do AARs. I don't know if each member is required to write one. Uh, it's just like a paragraph or two, right? Just your thoughts on the operation. It's an after-action report. Um, how many AARs do you think you've written in real life? More than you can count on one, two hands. Yeah. I, see. I, I mean, saw you struggling. Yeah. <laughs> a I lot. I don't know, man. I've Anytime. Longer than I've been alive, more than I've... Many, the years that I've been alive, at least. Yeah, that's like the worst part about any type of job, like being a cop or doing contract work or being in the military. Um, not everyone in the military needs to write after-action reports. Actually, sometimes depends on the unit, right? Depends on. The yeah, it really command, does. It but... depends on what you're doing. It depends on mm-hmm. what unit you're in. You know, uh, I, I did. I had to do them all the time. Um, I initially, I didn't care for them, but once I had access to other AARs from, you know, after action reviews from other people, like other units. And I was able to read them and learn things from that. Like it became very clear to me why those are very important. Yeah. Um, uh, because you're not always going to be in every situation. Um, also you're not ever going to see every point of view. And so seeing right. a single situation from 19, 20 different points of views are, is, genuinely important right it helps push so and progress entities forward plus if you like if you take some individual actions that you thought were pertinent for your task you, sometimes you might be making the right decision or you think you are and you might be severely hindering some other element by some of those actions taken like hey uh this happened to me i was like i i thought i was taking my squad through a, a great you know, avenue to approach this objective. But what ended up happening, it was training. Luckily it was with blanks, but I ended up cutting off part of the support by fire's position. Like they, they couldn't employ their weapon systems as effectively because yeah. of my dumbass. But I didn't know about that at the time. And it wasn't put over the radio. Like, cause everyone just had to adapt off me. And I thought I'm like, Oh, I'm making this great fucking like, you know, uh, general MacArthur style tactic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then in the after action report and and the debrief, I'm like, oh fuck, I'm an idiot. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, but I mean, it's not yeah. make to, meant to make people feel bad. It's oh, just no. to highlight, you know, friction points and how, like, yes. where to basically where to put oil to to relieve alleviate friction points. Yes. Um, or you know, if something didn't work right, like I, they're called so many different things. You surveys feedbacks customer surveys wh- like whatever terminology you want to put on it the military just calls it after action but the questionnaires right like these are important for our, ourselves right like uh, us in our community and people in our community members in our community are required to write these things because perfect example it spawned a good discussion about our comm structure and it spawned uh, a couple of things that i wasn't really aware of that were going on in a negative fashion. Not that anybody's going to get in trouble, but these are things that are I am now aware mm. of, and we can work together in a small group or as a community to sort of reduce these points of frictions going forward, right? Yeah. And so that could be with tactics, that could be with SOPs. It could create or dismantle SOPs. Like I'm trying to think of something out of the shop that I won't do again because of that. 
I can't really think of anything off the top yeah, of my head, but timing of certain things being reminding yourself to be patient. Like, you know, right. I, I was feeling like the, sometimes in star citizen, because of the bugs, your frustration starts bubbling. Right. And then when you're in a mm-hmm. frustrated state and you're not in that Zen, right. Um, that's, that's when you make mistakes as a leader or as, in individual actions. Right. So it's like understanding that maybe prepping better, you know, so we have some things we can go to the drawing board for. Sure. Uh, yeah, that's it's a solid, solid point, though. It's it's just so crucial to be evaluating oneself. If you want to improve yeah. in life, let me go like a little Zen mode on you here, a little guru. But like uh, I've made some leaps and bounds in my in my personal life, uh, in my career and like in the amount of revenue and money I can make for my company and, and then therefore salary and income. Right. So um, I'm not where I want to be. But I've made, looking back at where I was, like, I'm not down and out anymore, you know? And so it's just been nice. And that's come from self-evaluation, looking at myself and being like, Ooh. okay, it's not my employer's fault that I didn't make a paycheck or, like, that I got fired or, like, whatever. I used to be a piece of shit in that regard. It was never my fault. So going going inward and introspective, it was like, I had the hard decisions with myself and be like, I, I am the problem. Right. And so I had this, like Mm -hmm. this aha moments, moments, plural, and was able to kind of build some better disciplines in my craft and things that directly impacted my income. And it's the same thing I did in the military. Often it was so simple then because it was like improvement to stay alive. And then you go and like work civilian job and like somehow that just went out the window for me. It was like, I still need Mm -hmm. to be improving every day. And it's the same thing with Star Citizen. It's a very simple ask for our guys. It's like, hey, look introspectively, look at our org, look at the operation, that situation, and then kind of look at yourself as well. And what what could you have done better? What, What did you do well? What did you do bad? Where's the improvement? And then also the sustainments, right? So I guess we could talk about the nomenclature of an AAR. What do you want to see as a leader of an org the privateers. Um, I'm going to go over them as well because I'm I'm right there with you. But yeah. what do you look for specifically in AARs as far as like structure? Uh, uh, as far as structure, I don't really have like. I, for me, it's not about the structure; it's about the content, right? And, mm-hmm. and if it's one line that sums up your, what I look for is perspective, right? Um, <clears throat> I was a I played a certain role billet and somebody else played a certain billet, but just because I saw what I saw from my billet doesn't mean I saw the same thing or he, you know, this other individual saw the same thing from their billet. And so it's really, it helps me to go back and go, okay, well, as the GFC for this, like, what could I have done better? Mm -hmm. And it's sure I can go introspective, but if somebody makes an innocent comment, like, yeah, the logistics took a little too long. Well, now that gives me somewhere to look, right? Like, okay, the logistics took too long. And then I could reach yeah. out to that individual and be like, was there something specific about the logistics that you didn't like? And they could be like, yeah, I think trying to stuff three Pisces into an 890 jump was stupid. Good point. Okay. Do you have a solution? Okay, cool. I'll, let me listen to that solution. If not, then I'll have to, that's where I can start to go, yeah. okay, logistically, how do I do the response next time, right? And that's a whole part of like, so it's that. And then it's, you know, it, because we are creating our own missions and our own events and play sessions, like understanding the mission, did the mission make sense? Like, did the overall goal make sense? Yeah. If not, like, well, I'm a rifleman and I didn't really understand what I was doing, but my team leader was good at like tasking me, but you could tell he didn't understand what he was supposed to be doing either. So we just did something to look busy or whatever the case is. Right. Sure. And it's like, oh, okay, well, the objectives for that particular mission we created were not clear and defined well enough. So we need to go back and refine those. And so next time we play that mission, it's it's more fun, more, right? People yeah. have things they do. So I don't really look for a structure per se. I look for different perspectives on like, and consistently across multiple AARs, if multiple people are saying the same thing from different perspectives, that's a point of friction that we probably need to yeah. look at and, and and uh fix that's a really good point yeah i guess i guess um yeah the content is more important the the perspective gained is more important um i say loose structure i mean we do like 
title it, right? Like put a title on it. Like what operation was it? What was the date? Um, what, what your rank or role or however your community structures that, like, where are you in the community and what was your job or billet during this mm-hmm. operation? That's like up in the title. Um, and then in the core, uh, we just do like a sustains and improves is kind of a loose. That's about as structured as we get. Actually, the more I think about it, just yeah. label it so we could find it later and then tell us what you thought we did. Well, something that we should sustain and keep doing and then something that can improve at least that's kind of the loosest structure we could give. Um, if you guys want to yeah. get real rigid with your structures, there's a lot you could ask for like, um, and this is after action, right? So this is a great time to gather intelligence too. Um, so maybe we, we work that into our, maybe we do have a little bit more rigid structure on that. Cause if we're going to go fight the pathfinders again, an after action report is really great to gather all those perspectives and gather more details. You know, like I noticed that these type of players with this kit did these things, you know, cause we can all pick up those little details as if we all pick up one piece of this puzzle and then in an after action report, we type it in there. Now you echo or the org leader, right. Or the commander, whatever has lots of puzzle pieces. Now you can connect. So that was a big right. one in the military is um, if you got into contact, like, the Intel guys were like all over you. They like wanted to know like what, what did he look like? Did he have any scars? Did he have any uh, tattoos? Do you have any pictures of it? Do you have it like this? What did you see? What time of day was it? Where was he? Was he wearing sandals? Did he have, you know, did, what yeah. did his breath smell like? You're like, well, I don't know. Like I, like it was hot. I was dehydrated. I, my adrenaline was pumping. Like I, I fell down in a cactus yep. and I had ants biting me. I don't know. Right. I, I didn't see all those details, but if everyone picks up a couple details, then you can paint yeah. a really big intelligence picture off an AIR. And that's tough. That, on, on the flip side of that, it's tough too to pick up those little tiny pieces and put that picture together and understand, you know. Yeah, you're right. It's an oh, individual this action. This didn't work. Yeah, right. So you got to train those. It's a, I mean, I'm not great at it. I, no. I'm learning something new every day. And so it's just with anything, it takes skill, right? You don't just mm-hmm. hop on a bicycle one day and you're, you're, you're fucking BMXing around on loops and jumps and shit, you know? Tony like, Hawk's pro BMXer. Yeah, yeah you're Tony not Hawk. yeah, you're not pro BMX or like, you know, Tour de France winner number one the day you get on a road bike. Like it takes time for you to learn how to do that stuff. So Yeah, and it's it's things you can you can teach. So the AAR, whatever however you structure it, um, whatever you want to take away from this podcast, just know it's a great tool to build some good habits in looking introspectively, eliminating points of friction within your group. And then maybe building some intelligence um, stuff. And then making sure your your org is having fun. Because if you're putting yeah. these ops together and you guys are like, I fucking hated this. I, I took, because I took a day off work yesterday to be at this op because I was so stoked for it. And I'm still, I'm still stoked. But like, I was so pissed that, that the, this, the, the Chris Roberts gods, the, the star citizen gods shit on my day. Just, I got bugged out. Couldn't get back in. Blah, 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 blah. You know, and a lot of people were experiencing that. I think we had like nine people on our side disconnect at one point. Like uh, there was tw- Pathfinders like, too. I think in total, yeah, all at once there were like 25, 20, 25 crash to desktops <laughs> like that. And I think, again, because we were all in the same area, the server was like, oh, I don't know what to do with this. Uh, delete users, right? Like, and it just deleted users. But like, uh, come on, man. That's so funny though. Like you know the the scene in Wayne's World when they're playing hockey in the street yeah. and the car goes by and they're like, you know, car, car, and they like pull the goal over and like stop and game on. That's kind of what it does. Like yeah. disconnect. Ah oh, shit! And then everybody spawns back in their pilot seats. Like game on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was just. Uh, oh boy. So yeah, nightmares there. But like that stuff's unavoidable. But it's important to know. Like, you know, your, your dudes and people in the pathfinders or our, our privateers, like they dedicated a lot of time in preparation for this and maintaining their skills and their mindsets. And then, and then on game day, it's like, we're fighting uphill against the, the servers against the game. It was, it was, it was a three faction fight. It was yeah, the, it's always a three faction. Fight. It was the branders and mighty eight versus the path pathfinders versus Chris Roberts and the servers. 
Yeah, it's always it's always a PVE. <laughs> or <laughs> PVR. Yeah, it really yeah, it's like player PVR. versus reality of the server situation. It's a new type Whoa. of gameplay. It's emergent. And I was telling the yeah. guys today I, too, yeah. I was like, we are literally in a different like uh, a parallel universe to uh, Starship Troopers. The only good bug is a dead bug. And then we're over here playing. Right. The only good bug is the one that gets a hot fix. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know, we're just fighting Maybe. these bugs. When 85% of the company working on the game is working on one single entity. Yeah, that's rough. Um, but that's that's all I had on AARs. You got anything else? <clears throat> nah, man. I, I, I think we... Uh, it, no, I think we... Nailed it. It, it. It's important to like, these are tools. We, we're offering you tools mm-hmm. um, to put in your toolbox. If you want to use them, go for it. If not, disregard it. Just listen to our two stupid, dumb voices for an hour. Yeah. Just let, let us you lull you, you to that. sleep. <laughs> a little lullaby. A little star yeah. citizen lullaby before it goes. Maybe at some point somebody's going to come out and be like, hey, I used your AAR idea, but I, I had a better idea. I, this is how we do it. And I go, oh, fuck, that's a brilliant idea. And, you know, we implement it. So the, yeah. the exchange of information back and forth, it's, it's not just us to you. It's y'all to us as well. And, you know, we want to hear your feedback on it. Yeah, we do that too, but we like, you know, do it anonymously or whatever. And it's like, oh, that, you know, maybe that's a good idea. Dude, it makes my day coming, log, logging in and seeing the comments in, on YouTube or some of our Reddit comments and stuff. Because it's like, mm-hmm. even if you're like shitting on us, you're like, you guys suck. I'm like, hey, we're making yeah. an impact. <laughs> we're doing yeah, it. Right? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's always a fight like to, to log into the YouTube studio first and see who can get to the, because, the, you know, the way they, they structure the, the comments, it's like oh, that's not right. posted yet. And I'm like, oh, fuck, I got to get there before Daft. Do not say anything. Just read them. And then, you know. <laughs> yeah, and you usually do because I'm like so busy. <laughs> so are you, but you're just better at it. I'm like, dude, you're you're just I'm like so computer illiterate. Like if you see me <laughs> in Discords and Gilded, like it's a fact that I'm even in the comp structure that you've prepared. Like I'm learning piece by piece. Like you guys will say, like, oh, you're looking for some HDMR forty three file, sixty one. Go open up your <laughs> program eighty six nine or forty file. And I'm like, Oh what shit. the shit, dude? Like I came from consoles, man. You got to talk. Okay, slow. hold on, hold on, hold on. Go back to wait, I got good tools, right? Is that what you said? <laughs> yeah, yesterday I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> like you're gonna click on tools. You're gonna go to uh, you're options. It, you're gonna go to F3. You're gonna hit seven. It's, you're gonna put. I don't. For me, I don't care if you know that stuff. For me, it's it's like I want people that want to learn that stuff, and that's definitely you, right? Like you, you uh, have a desire cool. and well, thank you and. You're open to new ideas and <laughs> but you'll like, tell me okay, how to do something really sure, once. but and if it's like a, something I have yeah, to do every now and then, I'm like, uh Echo, right. sorry to bug you again, but <laughs> you know that yeah, thing you taught yeah, me yeah. one time? Yeah. Did you do that? You're like, Yeah, it's called control alt delete. <laughs> I'm like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I should have remembered. So mm-hmm. uh but that wraps it up for us, I think. Um any save I think rounds? So. I mean I've got tons but so we got, so we got many. many more podcasts ahead of us uh let's discuss uh, what, what do you want to talk about next time oh we, we were going to do the Put ooda the loop spot. oh That's yeah right. we were going to do ooda loop yeah so if yeah. you watched well, episode 11 surprise we're not doing ooda loop <laughs> yeah, yeah today we had an op come up so we decided to talk about that so next week we'll talk about ooda loop um the decision making loop it's gonna be fucking rad so which will be good because i think we could tie in some stuff with this as well so there'll be some context to what we're talking about absolutely yeah this would be a great uh, this is a perfect opportunity <clears throat> to do that so yeah um that's it from us guys let's see if we can nail this this time uh oh, i'm daft with me with as, as always is echo thank you for being a part of this and uh that's it from us we'll see you guys you uh, on the fuck, uh, on the, the the ground <laughs> on the ground we'll see Nailed you on it. the ground <laughs> i feel like that's something you would say before you parachute into a place right you look at your homies <laughs> yeah maybe I, yeah, I'll, I'll see you, I'll on, see you on the, the ground. ground i mean that's yeah that's just the toodaloo fuckers <laughs>